What's up everybody? Just finished our doors, got everything ready to spray the final top coat, thankfully, and got our ceiling planks delivered so we can start on those. But we wanted to take a little bit of a break today from the build and do a little episode of The Dirt. Uh, the Dirt is a little series that we do semi-regularly. We haven't done one in a while. Talk about uh, why we think what we think and do what we do, answer some viewer questions. And uh, there's been a pretty prevalent question in the comments what happened to the farm? Yeah. <laughs> Where are all your animals? It's called Gilbrook Farm. Where's your farm? So, so this is an episode called Gilbrook Farmless. <laughs> Where's your farm? Today's episode is sponsored by Green Chef. We appreciate their support. Let's get into it. So people coming to our channel usually come in on one of two different videos. It's either our Canning 101 video or it's our guide to raising backyard chickens. And when they start watching our current videos, they're like, oh, you guys are building a house now. What happened to all the animals? And so we're gonna kind of talk a little bit about that. When we first got into homesteading about five years ago, um, it was my whole goal to try and sort of learn a little bit about how homesteading works because my dad used to be a homesteader. Um, he never raised any livestock, but he was more of the hunting, foraging, um, that kind of type of homesteader, you know, build his own house, had his own contracting business. So he was a general contractor. And, and so I kind of wanted to learn a little bit more about, you know, how he lived that lifestyle, why he did what he did and, and get kind of the skills or learn some of those skills that he, that he had learned because he had passed away before I, he had a chance to pass those on to me. And so we kind of started getting into homesteading and learning how to uh, can and learning how to raise chickens uh, just because we wanted to figure out how to raise our own food. We didn't want to mm -hmm. get into hunting as much, especially living in suburbia at the time. Not really much hunting in suburbia uh, unless you're hunting for a sale. Um, so we decided to raise our own livestock and grow our own food. And so we started Guildbrook Farm because it was our plan to get into this homesteading lifestyle and to eventually, ideally, we wanted to raise our own, um, our own, our own food, organic food, and hopefully start selling that at local food, food markets. Mm -hmm. And living in suburbia, what we quickly found out was that we didn't have enough space to do what we wanted to do, or I mean, there were a lot of restrictions imposed upon us for doing what we wanted to do in that area. And so after a couple years, of, of doing that and going by the name of Gilbrook Farm because that's what we wanted to be when we grew up. <laughs> um, you know, we, we decided that we were going to move to what is basically raw land and start a little homestead here. Mm -hmm. And it was always our intention to, you know, recreate what we had in, in suburbia. The on a larger scale. On a larger scale. The difference is, is that things are a whole lot different up here on the mountain. Right. Um, the main difference is that there, the land isn't cleared. We, we don't have an area for raising uh, livestock or animals. Um, in order for us to do that, we need to clear, clear the property and put up fencing. Which is very expensive and very time consuming. Right. And the, the property is, is a young forest. It's not an older forest. So there is a lot of underbrush. And so in order for us to set up any kind of fencing and, and you have to definitely have good fencing when it comes to things like goats, mm -hmm. um, you know, it would require a significant amount of clearing and and also a significant amount of time and a significant amount of money. There's no barn here, there, there's nothing. We have no infrastructure here whatsoever. And so in order to get set up with any kind of, of livestock, it's gonna require a lot of time and money. And the two things that we don't have a lot of right now, in particular, since we're trying to build this home. We've been trying to build this home now for four years. Um, when we moved out to the property, it was our plan to start building the house within the first year. And as we mentioned many times before, just due to one thing or another, it just took that much time for us to get started. And now all of our time, energy, finances, everything is being invested into this house. And we don't have time to clear property and put up fencing. Right. And it doesn't make financial sense to do that. The other aspect, of, of livestock is we found out that our diets aren't quite suited to homesteading like diets. For example, me, I'm mostly vegan. I eat mostly a vegan diet and you know I eat a little bit of yogurt, not enough to warrant a goat. Yeah, well, and I don't eat a lot of eggs and Jeremy has an egg allergy. So and, I have a sensitivity to eggs and we certainly don't drink enough milk to justify having a goat. A, a goat. When we had goats, it was great, except we were getting a half a gallon of milk a day, and we had to do something with that. So she was making milk and or making cheese and yogurt and um, 
the only thing I use milk in really is coffee in the morning. So it doesn't really make sense for us to go through all the stuff you have to do to raise goats, which are can be sensitive to things. Uh, just for milk, I mean, we're not making soap. Um, we're not doing the homesteady type of things that would justify having goats or chickens now uh, because we just don't eat a lot, a lot of eggs. Uh, the intention was to, we, we did have a bunch of chickens uh, because we were able to sell eggs and that was kind of one of the things we were gonna go, one of the roads we were gonna go down, but you have to sell a whole lot of eggs at a very good price to justify that whole operation. Most people who are gonna have backyard chickens are gonna have a half dozen to a dozen of them just for their own consumption. It doesn't make that much sense for us anymore because we just don't eat that many eggs. Right, we tried doing the, the market thing with the eggs and it's, it's just not um, cost effective for because we wanted to raise non-GMO organic right. chickens and the cost of feed is so expensive that it's just not it, it's just not cost effective to sell the eggs. There was there was pretty much no profit um, in doing that, especially when we had to drive the eggs to suburbia, because up here in this area, this uh, is chicken every, land. Everyone has chickens. Yeah, this is so you're the, not going to sell One this of the market. big industries around here is raising chickens. Uh, you know, for the the meat plants and the egg f places. So there's no market for someone small like us to have a little farm raised organic chicken eggs or chickens. So. That doesn't make sense. But you know, when we did come out here, we did have some pigs and we did have some chickens. But you know, we just realized that with either our time is going to be spent managing this livestock for food that we cannot sell and we don't really eat, or we can put that energy into building this house. And so all of our time and energy focused on on this house build. Now, are we going to get back into livestock at some point? Yeah, maybe. Um, you know, we might do it, it, it might be a good idea to have goats on this property to, to clear most of the underbrush, mm -hmm. um, but that's gonna require, like we mentioned, a lot of money to get that all set up, uh, and we'd have to clear enough of it to get the, the proper fencing set up And I think well. it would be more like having pets. Yeah, it would than, be more. You know, than having a... They'd be more scrub goats than they would <laughs> yeah. be for, for dairy goats or, any, or, or and meat goats. And yeah. the other thing, you know, with me not eating meat, and you won't eat goat meat, um, so that's just, that's just not gonna yeah, work I mean, out for, for any kind of meat. Gardening crossing. though, uh, we built, we did a, uh, a really nice big uh, Appalachian Victory Garden last year mm -hmm. and it turned out very good, B better than I an anticipated, better than any garden that I've ever had. They did a fantastic job, I wasn't in charge of it. Uh, and one of the things that worked really well was the landscape cloth and cutting the holes uh, for the plants so that you kept the weeds down. That saved a little bit of time, but it still consumed so much time because... Because I'm doing organic. Right. Um, everybody up here uses seven dust to keep bugs off, but this area, I cannot emphasize how many bugs there are and they all want to use Eat your garden your as a buffet. Yeah. Um, so it is really, really hard to keep all the bugs off. It requires constant maintenance. And that is something that is really challenging to do when you are focusing all of your time on the house build, like Jeremy's doing, and doing you know the videos to, to go along with that, which is really time consuming. And school. Um, and then for me, I'm in school full time and doing art and you know doing house and kid things as well. And so I just don't have the time to dedicate towards gardening full time. And it doesn't make financial sense for me to spend that time, you know, trying to save a few dollars on, on some lettuce or, or a little bit of tomatoes and then rather than going and buying it. And so one thing that, that we decided to do this year is that we decided to try some of the food boxes. Now, we subscribe to a couple different organic food boxes mm. and they are delivered right to our house. And honestly, the cost of raising a garden versus getting, where you're getting a whole lot of produce that, and you have to spend a whole lot on, on uh, organic pesticides to get rid of the bugs and a whole lot of time, that cost is offset by, uh, the cost of a food box is offset by that same price. It, it equates to probably about the same. In well, order. the other thing is when you plant a garden, all of your vegetables come in at once. So you've got to eat them all or can them all. Uh, I'm not a big fan of canned vegetables. I love canning, uh, but I love canning meat in soups, right. not vegetables. I, I, I think canned vegetables are really mushy and I don't like them. And frozen vegetables are great for like soups and stuff, but I would never like freeze them and then thaw them out and eat like a, a meal of 
frozen, yeah. Right, frozen vegetables. I would put them in soups or something. I do like a lot of fresh vegetables, but I like them throughout the year. So one of the other challenges there is this area is different than where we came from. Where where we came from, there were a lot of options at grocery stores for fresh produce. There's not a lot of options, There's especially There's like one option organic. here now. And after this whole pandemic thing with all the supply chain issues, you're not seeing the, the inventory at these grocery stores and the quality is just not there anymore. They're having problems getting the product in and when they do get the product, it's just- It's already two weeks so old. They're so used to just-in-time delivery that, yeah, it's not very good. And so for us, it takes, it's a three hour ordeal just to go to a grocery store, pick out what we need, get back here. So you've got all that time and all that money in, invested in product that you either need to eat today or it's probably not gonna be yeah. that good. So we wanted to experiment with these uh, delivery boxes which have grown in popularity as a result of this pandemic thing. People just have their groceries shipped right to their door. So. So we tried that with a couple of organic um, vegetable produce boxes, and we're pretty pleased with that so far as mm -hmm. an alternative to a garden until we can get set up with another garden. We do plan on doing a garden in the future, but- At the house with raised beds. Right, we're gonna do raised beds. What we found worked in this area because of the bugs and the maintenance um, is that raised beds are gonna work best, but we need to clear an area for that first, and we need to build the beds, and we wanna get it all set up right with, with drip irrigation and all that so that mm -hmm. it's as low maintenance as possible to accommodate for our busy lifestyles. And so stopping the house build in order to do that right now just doesn't make any sense. No. So we're, we're kind of- um, In limbo. Right, we're, we're kind of working with a couple different alternatives here that work with our lifestyle. It's not really homesteady, to be honest. And, you know, we're, we're kind of not an all or nothing sort of couple. We're, we're kind of adapting to what works for us. And, mm -hmm. you know, there are people that are like, oh, you're not real homesteaders because you're not out there raising your cow and pulling <laughs> dandelions up out of the ground and eating a salad. You know, that's, that's cool, but it doesn't have to be all that or nothing. Right. And so, you know, we're we're trying to go with what works for our lifestyle and we're we're kind of changing and adapting over the years for what works for us and yeah. the other thing that we tried is with with me being gone all the time are uh, meal planning organic meal planning boxes like a meal kit which is pretty cool the, the this one that we are talking about today that we uh, just tried is from green chef and they send you the actual whole meal. Well, they send you three meals in a box and it's got all of the ingredients, pre-measured, pre-made, the sauces are pre-done. So you just go down the list and put it together. And it works great for me with her being gone. And she's generally the person who does all the cooking. Uh, I haven't really cooked much since I met her because she's really much better at it. So now she's gone all the time. I get this little, I, I would normally just make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or something like that and move on with my day. That's not gonna work for me. And that's not gonna work for her, <laughs> she's, she's a foodie. So so we get this box and we try it out and uh, it's actual meals with like aioli. And well, the other day was uh, burgers and feta with carrot fries. Mm -hmm. Then we made uh, sausages. chicken udon. Chicken udon, there's the, uh, the one we actually made. Sausage with aioli. Sausage with potatoes, with potatoes and aioli. I mean, and I'm not gonna make an aioli sauce so, but it comes like it's ready to go so you just go through the list the instructions do it 30 minutes boom rock and roll and uh, it works really well for the particular situation we're in right now where time is our most valuable asset and we're spread very thin um, we don't have time to garden we don't have time to go to the freaking grocery store uh, if I got 30 minutes to cook dinner and I've got everything right there already made, I didn't have to think about it, I didn't have to go to the store to get it, I don't have to come up with a recipe, cool, I'm gonna do that. Not every day, but it's a good option. Green Chef is a USDA certified organic company that delivers dishes for a variety of lifestyles including vegan, vegetarian, paleo, and keto. Go to greenchef.us and use code GILBROOKFARM100 to get 100 off plus free shipping on your first box. Ingredients come pre-measured, perfectly portioned, and mostly prepped. Green Chef offers nine recipes to choose from weekly within every meal plan. Let Green Chef do the meal planning, grocery shopping, and most of the prep for you week after week. Just go to greenchef.us and use code GILBROOKFARM100 to get $100 off plus free shipping on your first box.
works good. I like it as an option, and uh, I like it as an option because I don't have to cook, and yeah. I can come home, and he has a meal plan for me. Yeah. But that's just those are just some of the things that we're doing as an alternative to the whole farm thing. Right. So the question that this all culminates to is should we change our name? We're not really a farm anymore. Um, we're not really, we never really were. It was our intention to go down that path and, and, and try and become a farm, but we realized that's becoming a full-fledged farm is just not cost-effective for us. And it's not practical here. And it's not practical in this area here for us, for yeah. what we're currently doing. And so our channel is, and, and most of you guys are noticing this, is sort of changing over into more of a DIY, woodworking. Projects. Projects. It's it's going to be more, and with me being gone all the time, because I'm going to be in school full-time, and then I'm going to be working full-time, Jeremy's going to be the one that's here that's going to be fixing up this property and making it into an awesome property, building a, a pole barn and he wants to do some things with um with an alaskan sawmill and yeah like, there's a lot of outdoorsy type projects diy things t stuff about tools you know developing the property uh, tr tractor work stuff like that type of content which is sort of what this whole thing has morphed into over the past couple of years and that's the biggest question that people have in the comments is where th this channel is about building a house now it's not Homes. I came here to learn about chickens or to learn about canning, and that's cool. We get that, but we've already done all that stuff, and that's not really what this channel is about anymore. And that's why we're kind of having this conversation. So, so going the forward, the type of content that we've been making for the last year or so is probably the type of content that is going to continue to be. I'm going to get into making furniture. I might do some home renovation. I might a lot do some of finish fixing, work. Finish work, fix and flip type stuff. It's going to be hands-on DIY, workshoppy type things. Once in a while, actually, I want to do some cooking videos. I don't know if anybody's interested in that or I'm not. I'm interested but, in that. <laughs> I mean, one of the reasons we built the designed the kitchen the way we designed it was a lot of light was so we could do videos of things like canning and cooking and things like that. And Maybe we can get Jeremy to can. I don't think you're going to get me to can, but I'll definitely delve into some cooking stuff and making some stuff. I don't so, know if anybody's interested, but see, all so that different type of content is so different. So we, the question that we have for you guys is, should we change our name? We're, we're Guildbrook Farmless right now, <laughs> and we, we, we want to know your opinion. Should we keep the name just for posterity? I think or, so. or should we change the name to, like, Guildbrook Mountain? Or should we get off the whole Guildbrook thing and just be like, uh, Jeremy's DIY or the Jeremy channel or something <laughs> no. like that. Should we, you know, should we change the name of, of our channel or should we start a whole new channel and, you know, if we ever do any homesteady kind of things, put, put it on, on this channel? one? I don't know. I don't we're, really we're kinda, have two channels. Yeah, There's two so channels is kind of hard to maintain. So, so our question to you guys, leave it in the comments down below, is what do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, this is the future of our channel. It is going to be us here on the mountain or more Jeremy, and I'll be kind of in the background. I'll pop in now and again when I have time. Right. Um, but, you know, what do you guys think about as far as the branding aspect of this channel? And, and you know, are we deceiving people by having Gilbrook Farm in the title? We don't mean to do that. That was just kind of, yeah. we had to pick a name for when we started a channel and we thought big. And, and, that, the, and the channel is about, has always been about kind of what we're doing and our journey. It just was that at the beginning, the journey was about we're going to go do a farm thing. And now, and we're, now kinda, we're pivoting a little. We're kind of we're putting the farm thing off if we even do it. So what is the channel about? I don't know. It's about still about what we're doing and our journey. So we're up here on a mountain doing mountain things and building things. And, I don't, know. I don't say mountain things. That might imply quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> what is it you do in the mountain? All right, so that about wraps it up. We just kind of wanted to touch in with you guys, let you know, like, clarify some things as far as the ch what the channel's about and the direction of the channel and kind of get your thoughts as to what you guys think we should do as far as the branding of the channel. We'd like to know your thoughts. Leave them in the comments down below. And... Thanks to Green Chef for sponsoring today's episode, and thanks to them for feeding us last week because it was right. a busy it was week. It worked out great. Yes. They, did I mention they have gluten-free? Because they do have gluten-free, too. Paleo, vegan, keto... It's gluten-free. And it's mostly organic. So. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Yeah.